Alright guys, welcome back. We have a Pontiac Montana. And if you look here, it is a 2001 with a 3400. These motors are fabulous. Um, this was brought in uh, via a chain, <laughs> dragged in literally from another shop. Uh, they found that it doesn't start. That was the original complaint on it. Uh, they said that it cranks or it clicks once, like the starter's is trying to engage, and then it doesn't do anything after that. Lights come on sometimes on the dash, sometimes they don't. Uh, battery tested good, but they took it out and put a uh, new battery in here, which I am charging at the moment. Uh, we're just about up to par at this point via our uh, fluke. So. I made a couple of quick tests on this outside before I brought it in, and I'm pretty sure I know what's wrong with it. Um, couldn't do much out there. It's snowing and freezing outside at this moment in Jersey. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue on from where I left off, which was I had put a test light down at the battery. Uh, I'm sorry, down at the um, at the starter outside to see if I was losing, if I had a voltage drop, basically if I was if I was losing anything down to the starter when I was cranking this on the main battery cable, which I'm not. 12 volts down there. It's, well, it was actually about 11 volts. That's why I'm charging this battery up. But uh, <laughs> there was like no, there was no drop at all. There was nothing going on there. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to come in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. I'm going to hook up my my meter uh, now that it's just about charged. I wanted to wait to get this thing charged to turn the camera on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my negative lead of the fluke here and I'm going to hook it up to the negative side of the battery. I'm going to show you in a second I get you guys set up. I'm sorry about the noises here from the camera but I my mic still is giving me trouble. I need to invest in a mic. Uh, let me shut this charger off and get this stuff out of my way. For now I don't need it right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lead I'm just trying to show you guys what I'm doing here. I'm hooking up to the negative side of the battery. Uh, get you a shot as best I can. This is a little tight, guys, so it's a little bit difficult for me to film, but I'm doing the best I can. Uh, get my alligator clip here. I'm gonna have to put you guys down a minute. Hang on. Just hang tight a second, fellas. Sorry. I wanted to switch my lead over to another alligator. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the starter if I can. Uh, it's going to be hard. Let me see if I can get down here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going on the case of the starter. Alright. This may prove difficult with one uh, this may, be, this may prove difficult at the moment, but I'm going to try my best. Hopefully I have a connection there. I'm going to keep you guys focused on the meter. Turn the key on. Crank it. Look at that. Look at that. That is my negative side battery cable. And then the case ground on the uh, starter, the housing. All right, so what we're going to do is, before we go any further here, I'm going to grab my jumper clip here. This is hard to do with one hand, fellas. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can, but I'm trying to get you guys in view of what I'm doing and At the same time, get a connection here. What I'm going to try to do is I'm just going to try to get a ground. Now my meter is going to be useless at this point because I'm not hooking it back up. I just want to see something. Basically jumping a ground. Oh. All right. 
let me see if I can prove this out another way, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to do this with uh, limited means here, meaning that I'm holding this camera and trying to get you guys in position. You know what? I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm sorry. I'm going to shut the camera off, and I'm going to make a connection here, and then I'm going to restart my camera and we'll go from there. All right, guys, what I decided to do here, which I don't know how much of a view I'm going to get you, is I'm going to take this main ground off. I already broke it loose. And uh, I'm just kind of going to talk to you while I work, I guess, because I can't really get a shot of it. So it's, uh, it's just in a bad spot for me to film. I'm sorry. I'll try to show you what I can when I get this, when I get this nut off. And we'll see if we can see anything visibly. I mean, it may not show anything, but we'll do our best. No corrosion and stuff like that, but there is some rust. Uh, very little. I'm not going to be able to get you a shot in here. Basically, going to clean this up. Clean up the lead. bad spot to film. I have no way to get my camera in there really to show you. So I'm just gonna try to do the best I can with what I got here. I'm gonna roll from tight. Alright I just want to go inside and take a look. for you. Um, that ground, that ground uh, uh, there did not look bad physically, okay, to the eye it did not look bad, but that does not mean you have a good connection. And this is a good lesson because I see cars come in with grounds that, you know, uh, they have corrosion and stuff on them. But this really doesn't look that bad either. Actually, that, that connection underneath looked pretty much like this when I took it off. It was tight too. It didn't look like it was all oxidized or corroded or anything. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean it's a good connection. So, if you suspect the ground, obviously test it as I did. I saw the voltage drop, and it was either the um, the it was it could either be between where the starter mounts to the to the housing that it's losing the ground through there to the case or the main ground. The main ground on these is notorious for having a problem. So the first thing I wanted to do was check that and, and see where we were. When I felt it was tight, I was kind of second guessing it at that point. I was like, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably all oxidized between the starter itself and you know where it mounts. So it's losing the ground through there. But as you can see, don't ever overlook something. Uh, even if it looks good visually, uh, take it apart, look at it, clean it, and put it back. Because a lot of times you're gonna get, you're gonna overlook something very obvious. All right. So this turns out that it was in fact, uh, even though, I mean, we knew it was a ground issue, but it was in fact the main ground to the, uh, from the battery to the engine block that is causing the issue here. Um, normally I would recommend replacing the, you know, replacing the, uh, the battery cable just, you know, to, to know that you have a new cable in place. This is, like I said, from another shop. I'm not even going to waste my time in doing that. The cable is good. I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's, you know, I'm putting a part in here, that I'm, I'm leaving a part that's bad. Uh, but with the age of the vehicle, it's always good to have new cables in it. Uh, this guy's not going to do that, so I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to fix what's broke, and I'm going to uh, ship it. That's it. You have, to, you have to know, you have to pick your battles in this business, and it is what it is. So, um, a little update too, fellas. Uh, you know, the Toyota that I that I uh, was talking about the other day, I think I did the live stream and I was talking about a Toyota that I have in here in Avalon that has a bad engine. 
uh, the chain jumped and they had put uh, they had put an ECM, a fuel pump, and crank sensor, all this other crap in it. And uh, the guy calls me up today. You know, I actually I called him up because the vehicle's still here. I've been out of out of work for two days. Uh, he calls me. I call him up to ask him why the car's still here. And he says, "Oh, he says I didn't know. You know, I owed you money. What do I owe you money for? You didn't fix anything." I, I just. <laughs> I figured I would just share that with you guys. Um, and yeah, I told him up front what it's going to cost for me to diagnose it. And uh, I told him it's by the hour for this, being that they were tampering with it. And God knows what I'm going to have to unscrew that they screwed. So, uh, and that's exactly what it was. They screwed things up that I couldn't test the vehicle for the original problem until I fixed it. And um, yeah, so, it, you know, just a typical day, I guess. Um, but I wanted to. I just wanted to do this with you guys. I'm, I'm sorry about the visuals here that are not the best because like I said, this thing, I'm gonna show you now if I can, that now that I don't have to get two hands down here, I'm gonna try to shove the camera down. To show you, this is our ground that I was talking about. Now, um, it's not, as you can see here, there is some green on here, okay? The surface, there is, I mean, it's, like I said, I would recommend the cable here. They're not gonna do it. I'm not wasting my time, I know this guy. What I am going to do is, I am going to suffer through taking this back apart, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place. But dummy me, forgot. Uh, I'm going to go get some of that nice copper uh, anti-season. I'm going to put it on here, and then I'm going to suffer to tighten it back up again. But um, this is a fix, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to waste your time anymore. I just wanted to share it. Do voltage drop testing, guys. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, uh, there's videos on it. I've done a few, uh, uh, you know, on on this subject. Not uh, well in testing, at least on video. I haven't really gone through the uh, steps, but I believe Scanner Danner, Eric O. Uh, there's some guys out there to try uh, the uh, Train by Tex. I believe there's some videos out there by those guys um, on voltage drop testing. If you don't know how to do it, please learn how to do it before you start changing parts in vehicles that are good. Like these guys put a starter in, they put a battery in. They couldn't get it to start. They shipped it over here to me, and you know, within five minutes, we knew it was a ground side problem on this truck, and uh, that was causing the no start. So I mean, learn how to do this stuff because they had to take the starter out of the truck, put the old starter back in. Now they're gonna have to take the battery out and probably put the old battery back in. It's just all you're doing is wasting time. You know what I mean? That's why they didn't want to waste any more time, uh, knowing they were getting nowhere, and. Uh, the funny thing with this is they wouldn't have probably never found it because the ground on here was tight and if they didn't know how to do a voltage drop test, uh, they're not going to know. They're just not, they're simply not going to know that without experience uh, just saying, hey, maybe it's a ground problem, right? Let's go take it. Let's go attack the grounds. But the fact of the matter is we are able, when you do this kind of testing, you're able to pinpoint not only that it is a ground side problem, but you know the areas you have to approach to find the problem itself, right? So I know it's the main ground to the block or it's the starter casing that's not grounding properly in this case it was the main ground even though it looked good so I can't stress it enough guys proper um, procedure in diagnostics is where you where you're gonna make the difference between spending money on things you don't need spending time uh, doing things you don't need to do or leading from one test into the next to find the problem as quickly as possible and get to the root cause and fix it in this case, this is a no parts, I mean, technically, again, I'm going to say it again, it should have the cables changed, but are the cables going to cause a problem necessarily? No. They're, they're, I'm just saying they should be changed for your age and there's some oxidation and stuff, but it's not going to happen on this, so not waste the time. Uh, but again, if you guys had this at home and you were checking it, uh, what would you do, right? Well, how would you have approached this? This is a no crank, no start. Um, you have 12 volts down to the starter. You have 12 volts down to the S-wire, obviously, because it is trying to do something. Uh, where would you go from there? You'd put a starter in it. How many would put a starter in it? That's the question, without checking the ground. Um, when I do this kind of testing for a no-start, I check three things. If Okay, well, more than that sometimes, right? Most of the time what I do is, with a no-crank, no-start on something like this, where I assume it's a starter circuit issue, let me put it that way, I'm going to check my power, my main power down at the starter, Okay, battery, which is always going to be there. I'm going to check that unloaded and loaded, meaning I'm going to check that power when the car is at rest, and it should have 12 volts. 
when my partner goes in there and cranks it, who does exist, by the way, my partner exists, I'm telling you, he goes in there and cranks it, I want to see that, I want to see that that voltage is staying, it's not dropping down at, you know, seven volts or something, you know what I mean? Uh, I want to make sure that I have good voltage there. When I go to the S wire next, which is the start wire, crank uh, signal down to the starter, I certainly want to see my 12 volts there, okay? I want to see battery voltage there at cranking. Uh, the other thing I want to see is I want to see that I have a good ground, all right, to the starter case. And I've fixed many, many vehicles that had bad grounds. Whether it's the starter, like I said, the casing itself is losing the ground, or the main battery cable going down to the block. Always, always check your grounds. Can't stress it enough. So guys, voltage drop testing, powers and grounds. Learn it if you don't know it, and it'll save you a lot of aggravation. So we're going to call this a fix. I'm going to suffer through taking this back off like a dummy, because I should have did it the first time around, but uh, that's where we're going to go. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one, all right? Thanks for watching.